welcome to another Blender tutorial by Partners in Crime. In this tutorial, we're going to be learning how to make flash effect style elements within Blender 3D. So, we're going to create a lot of 3D objects and they're going to have shading like 2D objects. And we're going to use special textures and keyframes to animate our objects and make them look a little bit more dynamic. So, let's get started with making the effect. This is what you should get when you're finished with the tutorial. And let's get started. So, first thing you want to do is type numpad 7 on your keyboard to go into top view and then type control alt and then numpad 0 to bring your camera into front view and type x to delete the default cube and left click. Scroll up to zoom in. So, the object that we're going to have kind of uh, the object we're going to use to be our flash effects will be a meta ball. So, Let's shift A, meta ball, and click ball. We're just going to give this a kind of bumpy shape. So shift D, left click S, and just size that down. Left click, shift D, left click S, and just size that out. Left click. So let's right click on our meta ball, alt to convert to mesh and move it to another layer layer 2 here and let's click on layer 2 let's shift control alt c and origin to center of mass so that we get the origin of our object in the center of it and type g and move it down here so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the material view and we're going to go into the right of the screen here and add a new material and click that there to make it shadeless. Now let's go into the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier to smooth our object down. Type in on your keyboard and we're going to get rid of the grid floor so that uh, we don't have to see it. Scroll down and click, uh, let's see, until you see display. Click that there and uh, uncheck the grid floor. And for now, we won't be needing <coughs> the X or Y relationship lines. Okay. Now, we can add in the background. So, Shift A, Mesh, and click Plane. And we'll make this a shapeless material as well. So, let's just click the material that we created for this. And kind of separate it and make it its own material. So, that we can change the color to something darker. And S and left click and GZ to move that down here and left click and size that up a little bit more and F click to confirm that so let's right click back on our object here so the main thing we want to do is we're going to make this look kind of like cartoony puffy smoke so we've already basically got the base shape for it and what we want to do is we're going to add a um, we're going to add a displacement modifier so that it gets a lot of random displacement so let's click modifiers tab, add modifier and displace. And let's click new to add a new texture for it to displace to and go into the texture section and make the texture of clouds texture with a fairly large size. Now if we go into the modifiers section we can add another subdivision surface modifier after this to smooth it out a little bit more. So it's now starting to take on a little bit more of a nice organic kind of cartoony look. So one thing we want to do is to kind of get a nice animation out of this. If you type G and move the object around, you can see that um, it just kind of stays all the same shape. But what we want to do is we want to kind of give it a organic kind of cartoony movement as it moves across the screen. So to do that, we're going to change the texture coordinate from local to global here. And if I type G and move it across the screen, you can see we have a kind of fluid cartoony movement going on as we move it. And the reason for that being is if you kept it on local coordinates, it's basically mapping the texture to the object. So it's kind of like the texture wrapped around the object. But if you set it to global coordinates, it's kind of like it's running across the, our, we have our 3D object running across our texture in 3D space. So as it gets a new location, it just 
chooses the displacement to map to the texture along the 3D space. So, we get a nice effect here, so let's right click. So what we want to do is now we want to change our material a little bit because we've just got a plain, a plain white blobby thing here. So let's go in the material section and let's enable nodes and split the screen here so we can go into the node editor. This is where we're going to do our, our shading magic here. So let's click this material here and select material 1 so that we can get our material back in here. Let's click add color mix RGB. So uh, for cartoony smoke we should use different shades gray but I would like to have blue smoke so blue and blue. Let's put the values up and up and that should be good. So plug that in there. And you can see we've got a nice blue object here. So let's add input geometry and let's hook the normal up to here. And you can see we're starting to get kind of a mix between our two different shades of blues based on the geometry of our object. So if we just plug the normal into the color section, you can see it's got all the different normals of the object. And uh, we've got the red parts and the green parts. And basically we're going to just separate the green or the red parts out and we're going to use them to mix our two blues. So let's add converter, separate RGB, and uh, plug that in there and plug this in here. And you can see we've got our two blues mixed pretty nicely, but they still take on a kind of kind of weird 3D shading. So we're going to add some ultra contrast to it to give it that cartoony look. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically use a multiply math node to give this a lot of contrast. So add converter math, put it here, and multiply it, and put the value up. And as we put the value up, you can see we get a very nice contrast here, and it's starting to look really cartoony, just like we want it to look. So basically we've created some nice cartoon smoke. If you G and just move this across the screen, you can see we get some nice flash style effects. So what we want to do is we want to keep in our object. So first we are going to name this flash material and click and plus that and we are going to shift D this object and move it to the next layer so that we have an extra object that we've already created just in case we make an error on the object that we're going to animate here. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to really make it look like smoke. Alright, we're going to make it animate and kind of puff out the screen. And to do that, we can use modifiers or we could use shape keys. Now, uh, for this, let's, uh, let's use, let's use shape keys. So go into the mesh object data tab, click the plus to add a basis shape key and plus to add another shape key. So basically, now we've got our basic shape of the object and this is what our object should morph to. So let's type tab on our keyboard, right click this vertices here, type O and type G. And left click to confirm that. And RZ. And left click. And tab. And then pad zero to go back into that view. So basically we're going to kind of have that stream of smoke coming out as our object comes out. So uh, basically before we finish up our animation, we're going to want to add in our keyframes for our metaball. So jump to frame 85 and for this we're going to use AV Sync to make sure our animation plays correctly and we'll make it a 60 frames per second animation to get it nice and smooth. Alright, so select this 3D cursor 
as the thing that our object pivots around and type I location scaling and 52 S0 enter I location scaling so if we size that up you can see it gets that really popping out look and that's that's really good so uh, we're going to want our object to disappear after it pops out but before we do that we are going to add in the keyframes for the kind of the kind of smoke stream coming out here so let's jump back to frame 50 let's get frame 50 and uh, let's put that to 1 every crystal over that and type I and if we jump out here you'll see we want to put the value of the stream down to zero so have a crystal over that and type I and you'll see the stream come out right there and then you'll have the object and it's really nice and kind of puffing out one thing we want to do is after we get our object to puff out we want it to kind of disappear like smoke as well so let's select this to size around the individual origin and we can make it get really small after it comes out there and comes out a little bit more G left click S uh, S0 enter and I location scale so we get a kind of nice flash coming out before it kind of just puffs and another thing you can do is you can also just fade it out to transparency instead of having to have a kind of a little bit too cartoony for me sizing down there so let's uh, go into the material section here and uh, go into the material section here and uh, if you go into render view you see that's how it looks when it's rendered and if you put the alpha down it kind of just merges the alpha with the background so if we put the alpha back to one one thing you can do is actually mix the material with the background color to kind of give it the illusion that it's fading so let's do that material and let's click add color mix RGB put that there let's put the mix down to zero for now and this here, use the color selector and select that there and put the mix to one and you can see it kind of goes with the background so let's see our smoke puff coming out keep the value to zero, hover your cursor over that to I and, and you can put the value up and hover your cursor over that to I Alright, so in the viewport you won't be seeing a lot of the um, the effect, but if you set it to render view, you can see we can uh, we can see the color kind of go out. So that looks pretty good. So if you just want to have a viewport render, and you just want to have you you just want to use OpenGL, you can go back to Material View and you can uh, just plug this directly into here without using the mix the mix node to mix it with the background color since it doesn't show in the viewport so if you want to do OpenGL you can just directly plug it in there but if you want to use the blender internal renderer for this effect you want to use the mix node here and have that plugged in as it was before but uh, for now this is looking pretty good so one thing you can do to kind of get a multi smoke effect is you can shift D this and uh, you can rotate it around the 3D cursor, RZ, and left click. And we're going to need to use an empty to parent to this. So let's delete the duplicated one. Shift A to add an empty plane axis. Right click on this and hold down Shift and right click on the empty and type Control P and let's click Object, Keep Transform. Let's group this and type con and uh, we grouped it by typing shift D and let's make sure screencast keys are turned on so you can see what we're doing here 
and uh, if we type G you can see we're moving this around and let's type shift D to duplicate this and right click on one of the empties and you can just rotate it around and that looks pretty good so if you left click and just keep this playing here you can see we've got our nice smoke puffs coming out and it looks pretty good now to make our smoke puffs look significantly different we can change the textures that they displace to so let's go to the textures tab and click this three here to make sure we're not affecting the texture of this object and we can actually change it to a Voronoi texture to this place too and pull the depth all the way down to zero to get a little bit more of a cartoony look go into the displacement section and you can put the strength up and that just gives us a little bit of a little bit more strength on the puffiness and you can change the scaling of the texture to change how you want your smoke to look and uh, either way we have some nice looking flash kind of smoke so we hope you learned something new for this tutorial and we're probably going to be making a lot more flash effects tutorials in the future so if you want to learn how to render this out we have a tutorial for rendering that we will link in the description and uh, so if you're interested in other blender stuff you can also check our other links in the description so if you're interested in blender animation packs and more tutorials of the sort you can check out our website our cell file and to support our channel, you can look at our Patreon at Partners in Crime GFX. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more tutorials from Partners in Coordinated Rendering, Ideas, Motion, and Effects. <laughs>